It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. So you see I have this friend, his name is Chad Ferguson. He is the best cat fisherman I know. In fact, he runs North Texas Catfish Guide Service. He guides for catfish at lakes all across the northern half of Texas. And so I call Chad up this weekend and I say, Chad, how can a man who wants to catch a good mess of channel catfish go out under these conditions with low water levels in lakes across our region and with very hot surface temperatures, how can he go catch some catfish? Well, Chad gives me a little clue, a little technique that he says will work. And so I'm gonna go out today and give it a try. And if it works, I'll pass the technique along to you for free. While I'm doing that, we're gonna take you around the region for your very latest fishing reports. A little later on the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, I'm gonna show you a couple of other places where you can employ the same technique and catch catfish around the region. We'll have the Academy Right Stuff show you the equipment you'll need to do this. We'll have your big fish photos on the big catch of the week and expert answers to your fishing questions on the Ask the Pro. While I'm getting ready, you go back to the studios. Here's your Chevy weekend plan. Let's take a look at the Salooner tables for the last official weekend of the summer to help plan your fishing trip. Peak times during the day will start around 2.30 p.m. on Saturday and 3.30 p.m. on Sunday. And the best evening hours will be between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. Expect the sun to rise at 7.12 and set at 7.31. And we'll have a waning moon 76% visible. Also, there are two Hooked on Chevy Kidfish events taking place Saturday around the Lone Star State in Missouri City and Pasadena. Plus, there is also an event on Sunday in Conroe. Kids will have a chance to win prizes and catch fish just like these winners from West Columbia, Texas. Visit southwestoutdoorsreport.com and log in as a fan club member, then click on the Hooked on Chevy link to view all of the upcoming events. Stay with us, we've got fishing updates from Oklahoma, Texas, and Louisiana. Plus, I'll be back a little bit later with the Ask the Pro feature. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Buy quality award-winning tracker boats. Fish the finest. Lawrence, maker of the HDS, high-definition system, and Academy, right stuff, low price, every day. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Look at the cork going under. Got him right under that dock. <laughs> what have I got? Oh yeah, Mr. Catfish. Coming in very first thing. All right, here we go. Doing some channel catfishing today. And there is the first one, nice one. Boy, I ought to keep some today, but I've already got a freezer full of crappie at home, so we're going to let these go back. But if you catch some, you be sure and fillet them, put them in that freezer. But that's a good one. We're going to let him go back. All right, let's uh, go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. Very first thing, my buddy Chad Ferguson says, headed into this late summer, early fall time with this hot water and low lake levels, it is docks, docks, docks for channel catfish. You know, you think of docks, and got one right here in the background, perfect example. When I think of dock fishing, I'm always thinking about largemouth bass fishing around these piers and pilings, or I'm thinking about crappie, and actually I'm fishing with a rig that I use for crappie. This is a slip bobber rig. I'm gonna show it to you in detail on the Academy Right Stuff, but this is a great setup for catfish. We'll talk about some of the baits to use, which docks are the right ones? And there's gonna be one factor that's going to draw fish to some docks and not others. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So let's get things cranked off right now. Let's go up to Oklahoma, check in with your Oklahoma Fishing and Luck reports. Here's Gary Dallahan with the Sooner Beat. Another one of those really good southeastern Oklahoma fishing lakes is Sardis Lake, located approximately 25 miles east of Daisy off the Indian Nation Turnpike. The lake is about 14,000 acres in size. It's about two feet down from normal elevation. Water temperature is around 83 degrees. 
best known for its large mouth and crappie fishing, looks like the best bite at this particular time is for catfish, blues and channels, catching them on jug lines and rods and reels, primarily using cut bait. The best crappie fishing right now appears to be coming from the bridge you see behind me. This is the bridge that goes to the narrows. I talked to anglers atop the bridge as well as those fishing from boats underneath. Both groups said the same thing. They're catching their fish 10 to 15 foot deep on minnows over 30 foot of water. Some of the boat anglers say they're able to duplicate that pattern on standing timber throughout the lake. Both groups also say they're catching a lot of really small fish right now, so you're going to have to weed through some to catch a nice mess of keeper size. I did run across Wayne Wilcox and Kenneth Gwynn, both from the Wilberton area, who are cleaning a nice mess of crappie for a nice fish fry. Speaking of crappie, I want you to check out the fun weekend planned for Fort Gibson Lake, the Halloween weekend. Go to crappiemonsterfest.com. You'll see all the details about a kids, family, and pro division. One thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. On the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week this week, I want to show you some other lakes within our region where you can do the same kind of fishing and catch the same kind of catfish. You're looking for lakes with deep docks on them. In Texas, lakes like Tawakany and LBJ and Marble Falls. But there is one lake in Oklahoma I know has the right kind of docks, the right kind of depth. It's Grand Lake of the Cherokees in northeastern Oklahoma. Let's show it to you now on the Lawrence HDS-10. And we've got the InSight shaded relief mapping option on this particular unit. So we locate the lake south of Joplin, Missouri, south of the Kansas border here, and west of the Missouri and Arkansas borders here. We zoom down to locate the middle section of the lake. We highlight the heavily developed west shoreline right here for classic structure for catfish. Next, we switch to the Navionics Hot Maps Platinum software for all the detail. It's that card that you purchase and put in your card slot in your HDS unit. Now we locate that same area around Paradise Cove and Red Arrow Marina. There is very deep water just off the shoreline here, 30 to 90 feet deep, and this entire shoreline is lined with deep docks that can all hold good catfish, and that's what you're looking for. But my friend Chad Ferguson stressed that any lake in our region that has those docks that can provide the cover and the shade for those catfish will produce for you even this coming weekend. That's this week's Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week. Stay with us. Cajun Phil and Kevin are standing by in Louisiana. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Strin, the standard of dependability, by Gene LaRue Lures and Bobby Garland Baits, quality soft plastic baits made in Oklahoma with American pride. Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors, and Mercury Marine. There we go, got it. Big one. Come out from around there, come out from around there. There he comes. Man. And there we go. <laughs> we got something started here this morning. We are catching catfish today on the show. And I mentioned in the last segment that the way you want to do it is by finding docks. Now you can see behind me here, there is an entire row of just dock after dock after dock. How do you know which ones to fish? There, we finally got him loose. I'm gonna put this fish back. You can see behind me here, the first key is that you want to find docks with enough water underneath them, deep enough water. That's your first key is depth. And that's a challenge around many lakes in our region with the lakes being as low as they are with the year old drought in many parts of our southwest region. Finding docks that have got deep enough water on them can be a real challenge. You want at least four to six feet of water under the outside edge of the dock for it to hold good concentrations of catfish. We'll talk about the next factor coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first, let's check in with Cajun Phil and Kevin in Louisiana. Hi friends, Cajun Phil here with your Fox Louisiana Fishing Report. I tell you what, I did something a little different last week. I took a break off from fishing. I went alligator hunting. First time I've done that in a long time. We were down in Lafitte, Louisiana. We had a fantastic time. 
We had a couple of hunters in from Colorado who had never been alligator hunting in their life. We also had Casey Cavalier, and of course, my Reno Redhead, fired a gun for the first time in her life, and she got her a big old alligator, too. It was a lot of fun. We had 26 alligators, weighed over 6,000 pounds, and averaged over eight foot an alligator. While we were down there in the Lafitte area, we talked to several anglers that had just got back from Venice, Louisiana. They sat down there, they loaded the boat with tuna. Here closer to home, we talked to Captain Kevin yesterday. He's catching a limit of speckled trout and redfish just about each and every day. Give us a call, make a trip down here, catch yourself some speckled trout and redfish. Till next time, this is old Cajun Phil for Captain Kevin. Said happy fishing and may God bless it. We'll see you folks next week. Wow. I slid in here under this dock to get out of a little rain shower that came through and I just flipped my bait out right beside the boat and this bit it. <laughs> Man, this, this dock fishing for catfish is just deadly. I don't think I've ever really done it like this before. Just like you would fish for bass, going down the rows of docks, flipping and pitching back under the edge, and those catfish are laying underneath there. Hey, I want to mention that I'm not mentioning the lake that I'm fishing on today on purpose for a reason, and that's because I don't want you to get so focused on what lake I'm on. Chad Ferguson, the guide, says this will work on any lake that's got these docks under this kind of structure, and I'm going to mention the other big factor coming up in just a second, but this will work on your favorite lake or any lake you'd like to go to as long as it's got these docks hanging out over fairly deep water. All right, stay with us. We're coming back with more fishing reports. Got your Ask the Pro, Big Catch of the Week, Academy Right stuff, and much more coming up after this. Don't go anywhere. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. By Navionics, enjoy Navionics anytime, anywhere. By Whataburger, just like you like it. And by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Back under that dark dock right there. Here it comes. Pulling him out of that shade. All right, there's one more catfish for you. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, I want to show you something. This brings us to the next absolutely critical factor about catching these catfish underneath these docks. I want to show you right here. You can see the hard shadow line being cast. We finally got the sun out. The brighter it gets, the better the catfishing will be under these docks. When you can find those hard line shadows, you can see the contrast between how bright it is outside the dock and how black and dark that shadow is underneath the dock. Just like a bass or a crappie, those catfish will gang up under there. If you can find them under one dock, you can absolutely get well, catch several out from under one dock. But that one was in the darkest, blackest part of the shadow underneath that dock. All right, I'll get loose and getting back in the water, but right now we're taking you to the rest of your Texas freshwater fishing reports. Here's Brian Hughes. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Fun and Sun Boating Centers with two locations in Texas to serve you. Now we're going to start in East Texas at Lake Fork. One of the biggest tournaments of the year is coming on the 23rd, 24th and 25th. Now this is a big bass tournament meaning you have to catch fish under the slot limit and over the slot limit to weigh in for cash and prizes. For your hourly prizes, a lot of those 16 inch and under fish are going to cash checks. So to catch those, use smaller baits like quarter ounce spinner baits or cotton cordell spots, or you can even use road runners to catch those littler bass. Colors like chartreuse, white, anything shad colored will work right now on Lake Fork for the smaller fish. The bigger fish, well, let's go to a bigger bait. A jig, half ounce with a trailer. Fish that slowly around the channels and trees, or use a Texas rig 8 to 14 inch plastic worm. That'll help you get those big bass for the big checks on Lake Fork this week. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by Fun and Sun Boating Centers. Let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, Texas Outdoors Journal brings you this week's report. For the very best monthly coastal and inland fishing information, plus year-round hunting tips, check out our award-winning magazine. 
Pick up a copy of Texas Outdoors Journal on newsstands or subscribe securely at the website on the screen. Well, cooler weather continues to infiltrate the Texas coast. As we approach fall, anglers will need to watch wind directions and have an alternate plan that accounts for the change in that variable wind. On the lower coast, redfish have begun to make a move to the south, and trout and reds continue to hit a variety of lures and baits around Longbar. Now, on the upper Laguna Madre, redfish schools have been south of the Pure Oil Channel, as well as in behind Mustang Island on the southeast end of Corpus Christi Bay. Out of Port O'Connor and in behind Matagorda Island and Peninsula, good trout and redfish action have come from along the deeper edge of the grass. The surf continues to give up good fish when the winds have allowed. Now Trinity Bay, East Galveston Bay, and East Matagorda Bay have been good spots for anglers fishing deeper well pads and shell reefs. Bird activity continues to increase on Sabine, Trinity, Galveston, and West Matagorda Bays. Also, anglers have been seeing an increased number of slicks on the upper reaches of Trinity Bay. Rattling rigs with live shrimp as well as soft plastics have caught fish. This weekend, Saturday has a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides. This Sunday is a three tide day with two low tides and just one high. I'm Bill Olson and I'll see you on the coast. Oh man, this is one reason right here why you do not need to bring any of your wimpy tackle out here to do this because he's heading right back for the poles again. There, I think I've got him clear. I've got braided line on here. This is Strin Sonic Braid. Of course, they've got all those, oh, that's a big one. They've got all those fins sharp everywhere. This is no place for monofilament line of any kind. So I always use braid when I'm doing this. Strin Sonic Braid is braided line and I'm using, I think, 40 pound test. Real thin diameter but it's got an outer sheath on it that makes it real smooth going through the rod guides. Real smooth casting. And you don't need to be messing around with light rod, light reel, light line, or small hooks when you got a big old brute like that that can jump up there and bite you at any second. Away he goes. We'll wrap it all up for you, including your Ask the Pro Academy Wright stuff and Big Catch coming up next. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Academy. Wright stuff, low price, every day. Nitro Performance Bass Boats, fish your best in a nitro. Costa Del Mar Sunglasses, see what's out there. And by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Welcome back everyone, it's time now for our Ask the Pro feature. Our question this week comes to us from Tracy in Gloucester, Louisiana who wonders, what size hook should I use with a Texas rig? For the answer, let's check with professional angler, Terry Butcher. You know, if you're using a big worm, you know, you want to go with a uh, more of a uh, wide gap, long shank hook, you know, a little longer like a 5 odd or something on a, like to say a 10 inch worm. And on the woolly bug, you know, you go down to like the three yacht, uh, like if you're flipping with a straight shank hook, a uh, little, you, your hook's got to match your bait. Thanks, Terry. If you have a question for one of the pros, just visit our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com, click on the Ask the Pro link, and send us your information. Now let's take you back to Barry for our Whataburger Big Catch of the Week. This week's winner in the Big Catch of the Week contest comes to us from Joe Waltz of Padre Island, Texas, showing off his 28 and a half inch speckled trout he caught out of Baffin Bay down on the Texas Gulf Coast. What a beautiful picture that is. And he caught it fishing with guide John Fails of Land Cut Guide Service, once again, down on the coast. Hey, if you'd like to send us your big fish photo, Go to our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. Top right hand corner, you'll need to register to become a member of the fan club, it's free. And brand new, you can check on the schedule and go on the live chat session with our reporters every Saturday morning, 
after the Saturday morning airing from 8.30 to 9. So once again, you do it like that, go to the website, go to the members only area, click on the live chat, sign in with your screen name, and you'll be on board to ask questions and make comments with our weekly chat host. And it's Cajun Phil this Saturday. If you're watching the airing on Saturday, it'll be on right after this show is finished. Time right now for the Academy Right Stuff feature. Let's talk about the equipment you'll need to catch these catfish, beginning with a fairly heavy action rod. I like to do this with a spinning rod, but you can do it with a bait cast. This is the Abu Garcia Verdict Rod, and I like to pair that up with the brand new Abu Garcia Revo Spinning Reel. It's a fantastic reel. As I mentioned, I use braided line. This is Strand Sonic Braid, and we use a slip bobber rig, and here's what that consists of. You start with a glass or a plastic bead, put your line through it, turn it around and go right back through the same way so you can slide it up and down the line for whatever depth you want. And then about three feet down, slide a slip bobber on there, free sliding. Below that, I like to use about a eighth or a quarter ounce split shot pinched on your line. And below that, I like to use a circle hook. And on a circle hook, you don't want to snap hook set it. All you do is just gently lift your rod tip and start reeling. It'll hook the fish right in the lip. If you'll use that slip bobber rig and pitch and flip it underneath those shady boat docks like we showed you on this week's show, I think you can catch catfish right through the fall months. Hey, don't forget that our show will be on next Thursday night at 10.30 p.m. unless the Houston Astros baseball game runs late. In that case, we'll be on right after the post-game show. Don't forget to catch up with Cajun Phil right right after this show airs on the Saturday morning airing 8.30 to 9 on his live chat session. And you can see the entire schedule of all of our reporters up on that same page. Hey, have a good time out there catfishing this fall. I'm Barry Stokes. Until next week, be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.